On the mysterious false realm of Mortis, the false ghost of Qui-Gon appears before Anakin. Qui-Gon tells Anakin to head for the planet's well, an area symbolic with the dark side of the force. The sun tempts Anakin to the dark side, showing him visions of his future, and how the use of the dark side would change its outcome. Obi-Wan arrives a short while later, and discovers Anakin turning to the dark side, and together with Ahsoka, are able to get him off of the planet. But what if Obi-Wan had never found Anakin? How would this change Star Wars history? As you are about to see, a lot changes. The sun stands proudly in the heat-infested chasm, as he senses from the other side of the planet a sign of worry from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Using a small amount of his powers, he reaches into the Force and persuades Obi-Wan to stay where he was. The Chosen One was now his. Without the daughter, the Force would now reside with the dark side. The father sensed this too, and travelling at speed, he makes it to Obi-Wan and Ahsoka, telling them to leave the planet as quickly as possible, or they would be susceptible to the dark side too, and putting them into an induced coma forces them off the planet. Once outside of the realm, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka wake up, with Ahsoka's head ringing with the voice of the daughter, and looking to her side, she sees Obi-Wan also waking up, but no Anakin. Obi-Wan also wonders what happened to Anakin. Was this merely a hallucination, or was something more sinister at bay? After a quick search of the ship, Obi-Wan puts the council on alert, and they deploy nearby masters and knights to search for the missing Jedi. Meeting back up with Rex in the main cruiser, the duo divide the 501st Battalion to investigate the nearby regions. Chancellor Palpatine has of course been alerted by the council, and following this, he contacts Count Dooku. This was an unexpected occurrence. He could not allow the Chosen One to slip from his grasp. Together with Dooku, they attempt to search out Skywalker with the Force, but to no avail. Thus for now, Sidious would let the pitiful Jedi do their work, before his plan could be completed with Skywalker by his side. Obi-Wan, meanwhile, had hastily returned to the Jedi Temple, leaving Rex and Ahsoka in charge of the clones. Using all of his Jedi techniques to calm his emotions, he heads to Grandmaster Yoda's quarters, seeking advice on how to find Anakin. As Obi-Wan expects, Yoda is waiting for him, and begins to ask Obi-Wan what he remembered from his time on the shuttle. Obi-Wan remembered very little, except the voice of Qui-Gon, telling him that Anakin would be the one to find the balance of the Force. Yoda contemplates this memory. Prior to the fateful duel on Naboo, Qui-Gon had always had a fascination for the Cosmic Force, although he had rarely mentioned this to anyone else. This was a journey Yoda would have to make alone. Moving with extreme agility, Yoda zoomed off to the Jedi Archives, seeking information. Going through the many tomes on the Cosmic Force, he finds a common theme of a group of mysterious individuals, known as the Ancient Order of the Wills. Hopping into his small starship with his astromech, he allows the Force to guide him to his location. After a while, he hears the rapid beeping from his astromech, awakening him from his meditation. Looking at his navi computer, Yoda finds himself at the centre of the galaxy, at a nebula of some kind, and approaching it, he sees a ball of golden gas. Entering the planet, he touches down by an array of colourful foliage, seeing several figures drift towards him. Introducing themselves as the Force Priestesses, they guide him towards the wellspring of life. This, Yoda realised, was how he could reach Qui-Gon. Going through the five trials, Yoda is eventually granted the secret of transcending the living Force, which Qui-Gon had not managed to do, and he returned to Coruscant. In his meditation chambers, he entered a trance, as Qui-Gon finally reached out to him. Qui-Gon informs Yoda to go to wild space, and there, he would seek the answer he desired, before it was too late. Together with Obi-Wan, the duo head off to their shuttle, but not before they hear the sound of an angry voice. Looking behind them, they see the full fury of Senator Amidala, who is running towards their ship with menace. Obi-Wan makes a move to stop her, but Yoda beckons her on board. The trio take off, and sat in silence, except for Padme, 
who is cursing in her tears towards the Jedi not telling of the situation. Before Padme could do any damage, they arrived at the previous coordinates of the ship, and using their combined powers, the Jedi Masters drift themselves towards the realm. Finding themselves in nearly complete darkness, they take steps towards a tall tower, and stumble across the bodies of Chancellor Palpatine and Count Dooku. Clearly, something was not right. Taking their bodies back to the cargo hold in their ship, they return to the path towards the tower. Suddenly, they are met by the tall figure of the father, who is looking at them angrily, having told them not to return, as the son now had the dagger of Mortis. However, looking at Padme, his expression softens. She could be the key to the Chosen One, the father thought to himself. The trio follow the father, with Padme at the head of the group, as they move towards the base of the tower. Padme and Obi-Wan are in shock, as they see the son and Anakin casually conversing, flipping the dagger of mortis between them before the father confronts them. The son attacks the father, and he blocks it easily, as he uses the momentary break to bring about Padme from the shadows. The son changes his angle of attack, and sends a jet of red force lining towards Padme, causing her to be sent back into the framework of the tower. Something within Anakin became fueled by fire. Inhaling aggressively, Anakin used the Dag of Mortis to puncture the sun's torso, as the darkness around them was overcome by the light. Anakin dropped the dagger as he fell to the ground in pain. The amount of dark side energy Anakin had had to cope with was too much, even for the Chosen One. As the father tended to the sun, the floor of the planet rumbled, and he yelled at the Jedi Masters to leave as quickly as possible. Levitating Anakin and Padme's bodies with the Force, they sprint towards their ship and swiftly depart the atmosphere. Looking back at the unconscious Anakin, Yoda knew that he and Padme would recover in due course. But for now, he knew that he had learnt another lesson from the Force. That is it for what if Anakin stayed on Mortis. Please like this video and subscribe for more tips. And as always, leave a comment on what tips you'd like to see next. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.